Okay, so we've got our supported languages. Um, let's iterate over these and just output them. So we'll go back to language select screen and I'll scroll down. I can close down this use effect. We don't need that, I'll just collapse it. And what I'll do, or what I'll start by doing, or I'll, clo I'll collapse this custom header button too. At the top there, I'm gonna say uh, import supported languages from uh, dot dot slash uh, utils and then slash supported languages. So that will import that object. So that object will be accessible now uh, in that variable. And then what we'll do is scroll down and we'll get rid of this text. We'll keep the view with the styles.container, but I will get rid of the um, uh, just my content center and align item center. I'll get rid of those. I'll keep the rest of the style, the flex one and the background color. Oops, I have a stray angle bracket there, so get rid of that. Uh, and inside here, we're gonna add a flat list. This is the only element this will contain. Um, so just a flat list. Now a flat list is um, kind of like a scrollable element. Um, it's very similar to a scroll view if you've used that before, but um, you use a flat list when you've got a dynamic uh, number of properties or like a large data set. So yeah, essentially this is a scrollable element. So the data for this, data, um, and what we want to set the data to, I've closed down the supported languages one. If I open this back up again, the data we want to use for this flat list, so each element, is going to be the values of this. So we've got this object. This object has a key and then property values. So what we want to do is use all of the values from here. We don't want to output the keys to the user. That's what we'll use behind the scenes. We only want to output these strings. So an easy way to do that is just to say um, object.values, and inside there we'll put supported languages. We'll then specify a render item uh, property, which is just the, the function it will call to render each item. And it will take some item data. Uh, and what I'm gonna do, just to show you how this works, I'll just output some text right now. Um, hello. If I scroll up, make sure that's imported. Yeah, we've got it there. Um, oh, we haven't imported flat list, so make sure you import flat list from React Native 2. Uh, if I save that, we should get a ton of hellos, um, or a crash, or whatever. And I can actually see what I did. This should be an uppercase L in flat list. Um, so make sure you have an uppercase L there. A pretty subtle difference, that's my mistake, sorry about that. If I open that now, you should see a ton of hellos. So it looks like there's just a ton of them, but this is one for every single one of the supported languages that we see. So for every item, it's gonna run this command here. So obviously we don't output hello. Now, what I'll do, we can just log the, um, I, in fact I won't do that, they'll log a lot of stuff. So what we can do is get the language key, uh, and I've actually noticed we've used object.values here, I've actually got that the wrong way around, so we actually want object.keys. So if we change this object.values to object.keys, what we'll essentially have is all of these, one by one, all of the keys here, okay? Uh, and using those keys, we can easily access the string uh, value for that. So we're gonna get the keys, and I can extract the key by saying uh, const language key equals item data dot item. So the item itself is the key. And then if I um, copy that language key, I can then say const language string equals uh, supported languages. And in square brackets, I'll put the language key. And this should give us the uh, actual text for that language now. So instead of um, hello, I'm going to put it in curly brackets and then put language key in there. Sorry, language string in there. Now if I save it, it should change to the actual strings itself. So there we go. We've got all our supported languages. we just got to add a bit of style to this and we'll be good to go. Let me just check the terminal, see what we got here. Is that an old error message? Let me refresh this. I can't tell whether that's a new one or an old one, uh, whether it's something we need to fix or not. I'm opening this up. Uh, okay, I think we're good to go. So it hasn't given us any errors about keys. Uh, sometimes using flat list, you do get an error about it needing to have a, a unique key. But I think we're actually good to go. So essentially now we just need to output some other element here. We don't want to just output some text. We want to output an actual React component. So, so what I'll do is go to uh, our file explorer. Do we have a components folder yet? I don't know if I've created one of those yet. Let me just check the files. So no, we don't have a components folder. So I'll right click in the root of my project and create a components folder. And in there, I'm gonna create a new file and this can just be um, language item.js. Now, of course, uh, you could also move this uh, custom header button there into its own file if you wanted to, but since we're only using it on this file, I just left it there. 
So anyway, what we'll do is export default um, language item. Uh, prop, we'll set that equal to props. So we're doing an arrow function here. And then there won't be anything in this other than just a return. Um, touchable opacity. Opacity, make sure to import it from React Native. And then in there, we'll have a view. View. And make sure you import that uh, view as well. So view from React Native. And this will be uh, just style uh, equals, oh, we haven't created our styles yet. So underneath there, let me just create the styles real quick. Const styles equals style sheet from React Native dot create. Okay, uh, and this would be styles in here, the style for that view, styles dot, oops, styles dot icon container. And I'll take that name and add the style block for it now. Um, and in fact, we'll also add a style property on the touchable opacity element. So style equals styles dot, uh, we'll say container. And I'll put the container one first, that just seems to be the way I do things. So container goes first, not that it matters about the order. And a comma there, cool. Now we're gonna use an icon, so I'll go back to my icon page, this icons.expo.fyi, I'm gonna look for a check mark. This will be a, a check to show whether it's actually selected or not. Um, and I think there's a good one in uh, feather, so I'll check feather, I'll use this thin, this thin uh, check mark. So I'll copy the import, and I'll scroll up, and I'll paste that underneath, and I'll go back to here and copy the actual uh, element itself, and I'll paste that in that view. There we go, so we got uh, that icon now. Um, I'm gonna change the size to make it a bit smaller to 18, and then the color is not gonna be black, it's gonna be colors, so I'll import that, dot text color. Cool. Um, do we need any style on that? I think we're good. Uh, nope, so outside of that view, we'll just create one more element, just a simple text element. Uh, and that's just going to be props.text. So put it in your curly brackets because it's we're extracting the value from an object. Um, and this will be a text property that's passed into this. And then uh, we'll just have some style on this, which is style equals styles. Oops. Styles.text. All right, so I'll go down here and add this block for the uh, text style like that. All right, great. So we've got our elements now. We just have to style them. So what I'll do, though, is actually output something so we can see the style as we go. Um, so we need to pass in the props.txt. So I'll save this file, go back to supported languages, uh, not that one, sorry, go back to language select, I meant, uh, where's that gone? Did I close it down? Language select screen. Uh, scroll down to our flat list, and instead of returning this text element, we're gonna return language item. So we'll add the import there. It's a self-closing block. And then we need a, uh, was it text? What was the property called? Just text? I got short-term memory loss or something. Um, prop, Props.text, great. So text equals, uh, and this will be language string. Okay, I think that's it. If I save it, you should see the exact same thing, but with an icon now, I think. So let me, okay, we've got language item. Why is it open that? Okay, language item, uh, did I miss the import? Hmm. Can't find variable language item. Oh, maybe I just need to refresh this. I'll go down to here and press R. And I think we're good. Oh God, we're not good. Uh, can't find variable text. Um, do I, did I just miss the import? Yeah, as always, I missed the import. So import uh, text from React Native as well. Save that in, and go to the file. Uh, and we see a ton of these now with uh, check marks. It looks great, doesn't it? Um, no, it doesn't. Let's make this look a little bit better. Let me go to the container uh, and we'll say padding horizontal is going to be 10. Padding vertical is going to be um, 15. We'll also say flex direction is going to be row, which will make them appear side by side. If I save that now, uh, there you go, cool. You see them appear side by side, so it already looks a little bit better. Um, we're going to add a border bottom color. So border bottom uh, color is going to be colors. Add the import for that dot, uh, what do we want to do? Gray, light gray. And then finally, uh, border bottom width is going to just be one. If I save that now, we'll get a nice little border underneath. Cool. 
All right, we'll scroll down to the uh, the icon container. We'll say padding uh, right, oops, right. Man, I can't spell today. Padding right um, is going to be seven. So if I save that, it'll push some padding across there. Um, we'll also say align items center, and then finally um, justify content center. Oh, actually, you know, we want to also add some width. So width is going to be uh, 40. Give that a save. Change a little bit. Cool. Uh, and then finally, we'll start the text now. All we're going to do is just say flex one. So the text block text of the whole width or the whole remaining width. Um, we'll then say font family is just going to be uh, regular. And then finally, you knew it was coming. The letter spacing is going to be 0 0.3. Give that a save now. And we are good to go on that. Um, now, obviously, we don't want them all to be checked. We'll take care of that. So the styling's done. You'll be glad to know. Now, instead of outputting this checked uh, icon all the time, we want to do it conditionally. So what I'm going to do is put this inside of uh, curly brackets like this. And above that, I'll say props dot selected and then double ampersand. So if the selected property is true or it's passed in, um, then it will output the check. If not, it won't, as you see, it's disappeared. So let me go back to the home screen and just to kind of give you a little demo of how this will work eventually. Uh, where are we? Where's my flat list? Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. I'm gonna go back to language select screen, my mistake. Um, in here, if I just move this onto the line below, uh, and the same with that, just create some space. Um, if I specify the selected property, selected equals true, it should give them all the check like that. Um, but if you set it to false, it should go away like that. Cool. So we can conditionally specify whether they're selected or not. Um, now, of course, we don't want to set it to just true or false. We want to do it based on something. So for now, what we can do is just say language key uh, equals 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 ES. Just to show you how it works, that's the language key for Spanish, as you'll see in the supported languages file. If I save that now and scroll down, do we have Spanish somewhere in here? Uh, there, I just went past it. Uh, Spanish is selected because only one of them has that. So all of them were false, but they got to Spanish and language key was equal to ES and it, uh, and it checked it. So that's an example of how, um, how, we'll, how we'll only show one check mark uh, based on what language is selected. All we have to do is compare language key equal to whatever the current language is 